before we jump into language comprehension and production, I want to put those language functions within the broader context of what the auditory system uh, does, the, 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 the full complement of the auditory uh, system's uh, functions and vulnerabilities. So this is a schematic where I've put the hindbrain, the midbrain, the thalamus, and then the two hemispheres, the left hemisphere and the right telencephalic hemisphere. Um, and what you see is that the, the ear with the cochlea uh, enters the hindbrain, synapses in the cochlear nuclei, and after the cochlear nuclei, the pathways, the auditory pathways rise in parallel so that information from both ears is going to both sides. Um, the, there is very little that is uh, that the auditory system does before you get to the cerebral hemisphere, but there is one important function, which is acoustic startle. And so, uh, actually, one of the things that, that the very first cochlear implants, uh, they had one channel, and one of the thing that happened right away is that um, individuals who got these cochlear implants, when they, when they were on the street and they heard a honk, they were startled right away. Okay, so that doesn't take, that does not take the cerebral hemisphere. That's a, uh, a hindbrain supported response, the, st the acoustic startle. So that uh, is a hindbrain function. And then, as you know, uh, so lesions anywhere in here or here can have an effect, can have a very detrimental effect on hearing from that ear, but lesions anywhere uh, up here do not have any effect on, um, on don't have a, a dramatic effect on auditory functions. Once we get to primary auditory cortex, or A1, there are three functions. One is speech slash language, and we'll look at that. Um, and the other two are music, both understanding music, producing music, recognizing music, remembering tunes, et cetera. Um, and the other one is sound localization. Sound localization is not a huge deal for us, but we tend to, to know that the car that's honking is, is coming from the left or from the right, from the front or from the back, that the child that's yelling, uh, help, help, is is over there and not over there. So we have some form of sound localization. It doesn't hold a candle to what the owl has, but we, we can localize sounds at least crudely. Um, that happens, that uses uh, both cerebral hemispheres, as does music. Music, there might be some um, specialization across the hemispheres, but in general, both hemispheres make a, a contribution to most music functions. And then we have speech and language, and then it's a different beast because the left hemisphere is the dominant hemisphere in about 90 to 95% of us. So in, in about 5% of people who tend more often to be left-handed, but not but most left-handed people still have a, um, have a left hemisphere dominant, uh, their left hemisphere is dominant, and dominant in this in this regard, what dominant means is which hemisphere is responsible for language comp comprehension and, and production. So it is the left hemisphere, and I'm going to speak as though it's always the left, left hemisphere. In a few people, it might be it, it's the right hemisphere. Okay, so the dominant hemisphere, the left hemisphere, is responsible for producing and comprehending language. The right hemisphere has has uh, roles in, in speech, but um, less in the semantic uh, content and more in prosody, so the, 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 the underlying tone. Okay, when we come over to the slide, what you can see is that there, there's, a, there's a ventral and dorsal, the, there are ventral and dorsal pathways that support these two uh, the, the two major language functions, comprehension on one hand and production on the other hand. So 
Uh, here's auditory cortex. This is we're showing the left hemisphere. Uh, this was the this was first proposed correctly by um, Broca in 1860 to 1865, um, and and what what Broca said is that the left hemisphere is the is responsible for uh, for language production for speech production. And he was talking about a place up here. So let's see, what, do, what happens? Information comes in. It comes into both auditory cortices, both primary auditory cortices. And it's processed in both places. But it ends up uh, being processed to the point of uh, semantic understanding on the left. And so information gets processed in from, from little bits of information is that a t or a or a b um, and then to phonemes and then to syllables and then to uh, sentences and then that that the sounds that are are um, processed get sent to this area here which is the temporoparietal junction uh, this this area where the temporal lobe meets the parietal lobe and very close to the occipital lobe so this this area right here is where we think there's a, a basically a lookup table. You get this auditory sound, it means this. It's the it's the dictionary for speech. So this is the uh, the lexicon of the brain, and it's not just the lexicon for spoken language. It's also the lexicon for reading. So information from uh, however an individual reads, whether it's by sight or by feel, that information comes from the primary visual cortex and it, it, uh, it is uh, sent to this temporal parietal junction where the information is read in. So people who have a lesion here have a Wernicke's aphasia. Wernicke's aphasia means that they have a very a uh, difficult time understanding the semantics of speech, what is being said. They, uh, they are going to have a hard time understanding spoken speech. They're also going to have a hard time reading. That's called alexia. So the hard time understanding speech is an aphasia. It's a Wernicke's aphasia, also known as a fluent aphasia. It's known as a fluent aphasia because they still can produce speech, but they can't understand it. Uh, talking and and uh, treating uh, individuals with Wernicke's aphasia is very challenging. They don't. It's hard to have a conversation where uh, one person doesn't doesn't understand the, the language. Um, it, of note, they still know that they're being asked questions, and you might ans you might ask, as my students have in the past, um, how do they know they're being asked questions? And one probable guess is that they still have their processing of prosody on the right. The right hemisphere is intact. They don't have a lesion over there. And the right hemisphere deals with prosody. And when I say, this is my book, that's different from, this is my book. So one is a statement and one is a question. And the only difference is in prosody. So I the guess would be that they're using the right hemisphere to understand that they're being asked a question, but what their understanding of that question is is, um, is the problem. Um, they don't have an understanding of what that question is. OK, so uh, under normal circumstances, speech comes in. It's understood. And now there's a response. And the response is going to go uh, this way. It's going to go. Remember that parietal, the, the, these are all sensory areas. The, the, the parietal lobe is, is going to have an association area where it's taking in visual information, auditory information, somatosensory information, and integrating that into something. And now you're going to take that information and put it over to the frontal lobe, both to Broca's area, which is this area, this opic, op, operculum area right here, and also more dorsal area, dorsal dorsally located um, speech areas in the frontal lobe. And this is going to allow one to produce language. And in most of us, the pro 
production of language include, involves speech. But in some individuals who have been, or deaf from birth, language production is, say, through sign language. Now, an individual who is native sign language speaker um, and has a lesion here will not be able to sign. So what does that tell you? It tells you something very important. This area, these, these areas are involved in language production, not speech production, language production, the ability to communicate, the ability to use language to communicate with another individual. And so this uh, lesions here or, or in, up in this region can produce Broca's aphasia. This is a non-fluent aphasia. They understand what you're saying, but when they, when they go to speak, it, it comes out completely non-fluently. Okay, these are the two uh, extreme versions of aphasia, uh, and there are, are varieties in between, but uh, this is what you, what you really want to remember. You want to remember that there is, there is, first of all, that language depends on the left. The semantics of language depend on the left. The prosody depends on the right. And within the left hemisphere, these more caudal regions, the temporal parietal region is involved in comprehension, whereas the frontal area regions are involved in production. And it's production of language, not of speech. Okay, great. We're gonna move on and leave the delightful topic of hearing. <laughs>